Good morning, everyone. This is the School of Christian Mysticism, and this is our, our Monday meditation. Welcome to all those who have already been here in morning prayer, and those that have just joined us, and also those of you that are listening by recording at some time in the future and in some place. It's a wonderful thing to gather and practice together. The meditation this morning takes as its inspiration and uh, instruction the readings which we've had in morning prayer. And for your uh, reference, uh, these are the Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verses 1 to 22. And Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. So let us begin in the name of love eternal. In the name of love incarnate in the Christ, in us. In the name of love flowing into us and out of us into the world. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us begin by coming into presence. Just being aware of our bodies, inviting our bodies to be present. Breathing deeply, a welcome to our bodies who will carry us in our inclination. And let us become present to our minds, accepting whatever is going on, whatever thoughts we're having, our minds are continuously producing thought of one sort or another. But we welcome whatever is going on for us mentally at present. And know that underneath the flourishing of thought, there is the mind of Christ.
and let us be present in our hearts. Whatever our emotions at this moment, whether of joy and happiness and or anxiety or sadness, anger, welcome to every bit of ourselves. No part needs to be left outside the door. Christ calls us into unity. So breathing in and out of the heart. And I'd like us to begin by, or continue by working with the, the, the word Allah, Allah, which was the word which Jesus would have used for God in Aramaic. And of course, it's very similar to the word Allah for God in Arabic. And an aspect of the word Allah, this sacred sound, which is everything, which is one. Is a representation of yes and no. Al is an affirmation and no is a, a negation and ha is the sound of the breath. So Allah, the yes and no of love, all in the breath. And we're going to explore a little bit more about that yes and no. So as we breathe in, let's think Allah. And as we breathe out, we think Allah. And continuing with this repetition on the breath, Allah, the yes and no, unity, the yes and no of love.
we we'll just let that practice uh, fade now. And I'd like to tell you something about the readings. The Old Testament reading was taken from the book of Deuteronomy and and uh, is uh, a, a, a recounting by Moses of the Ten Commandments. And the story of Moses is a, an extraordinary one, I, I, I feel. He is born into slavery with his fellow Israelites. But then uh, if we remember, there's that uh, wonderful story, which is very like Talia's and the story of Talia's in where he's, um, the, and also Jesus, where there is, uh, well, the boy babies are about to be killed by the Pharaoh and the Egyptians to whom they are slaves and enslaved people. And the boy's mother puts him in a little rush basket and floats him on the Nile. And he's found by the royal family, by the pharaoh's family, and adopted. But he returns from that uh, life of privilege to his people on the, on the command of, on the guidance of the, of the divine. He sees one of his fellow Israelites being uh, hit by a slave master and he kills the Egyptian and he has to run for his life. And it's when he is in his own freedom, he is called back to help his people out of the burning bush. And thereafter follows a very long period of him going under God's guidance and command to the Pharaoh to ask that he set his people free. And the Pharaoh refuses many times over. And God visits many plagues on the Pharaoh and eventually the people are set free and they are led through the Red Sea, as we recall, and into the desert for where they wander for 40 years on a, a very special time of being close to their teacher, Moses, who is being directly taught by God. And they have to learn to be free. And the following books of Moses our instruction from God through Moses on how to be free. And the Ten Commandments form part of that instruction. And in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is old and he is reminding the people of the guidance that they have been given. And the Ten Commandments are what not to do on the whole. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. 
Thou shalt not work on the seventh day. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I think we will know these commands. And of course, they can be taken at many levels, not just literally, but including literally. They are, if you like, the negation. They are the, the no of love in Allah. to restrain the ego. And last week, and this uh, teaching can be accessed again through our website, uh, Liv led us in a, a practice called the Four C's. And this was a uh, also, uh, if we like, a uh, negation practice to shift us from dualistic thinking and behaving to a sense of that unity which underlies. Don't compare. Don't compete. Don't criticize. Don't complain. And a very powerful and important practice that is. Returning to the letter of Paul in the Ephesians, we could perhaps consider it a, a teaching on the yes of love. When Paul is saying to the Ephesians, in Christ we are blessed. We are chosen to be holy and blameless. In Christ, we are predestined for adoption to be sons and daughters, to be family. In Christ, we are given grace lavishly. In Christ, we are forgiven. In Christ, we are redeemed. In Christ, we are informed and guided by his will, by his purpose. In Christ, we are marked with the seal of the Holy Spirit, which is like, in my version, a deposit which guarantees our inheritance. I find myself that uh, it is um, very, very easy to remember my imperfection. And uh, really difficult to remember my perfection in Christ. And uh, so I'd like to invite us into a into some intimate conversation with Christ through prayer. So let's prepare ourselves for this now.
Let us, as Christ invites us, go into the private room of our heart and close the door. And have that sense that this is just the Christ and us. The Christ and you, the Christ and me. And if you are aware of the presence of the, of the Christ as a person, then feel free to accept whatever manifestation of that person that is uh, the Christ for you. And uh, this may be Jesus the Christ. It may be uh, Mary of Magdalene the Christ, however this is for you. But uh, the Christ may not uh, appear to you as a, as, a, as a personage or something. So that we know that we are loved. In Paul's letter, we know that we are loved. We know that we are family. We know that we always have been. And the first prayer that I invite us to pray is one of gratitude. So bring your gratitude to the prize. What, what have you got? to be grateful for at the moment. Perhaps pick one thing, it may be an object, it may be a relationship, it may be an event. What have you got to be especially grateful for at the moment? And the prayer of gratitude gives rise to that very everyday language of thank you. So allowing the heart to expand and soften with that feeling of gratitude.
And here as we are in this room of our heart with the beloved the Christ, as we feel the heart soften and expand with gratitude for whatever it is, let us become also aware of what tends to limit our expression, our connection with the Christ. What uh, do we sense is our, a limitation for us at the moment? Or what would we like to say that we're sorry about? So it's the prayer of repentance. There is a, a Sufi story about uh, a man who wanted to go to the mosque in the morning and he overslept and uh, appalled. He hurriedly got dressed and ran towards the mosque only to find everyone coming out. And he uh, wept. And one of the seniors coming out from the mosque, one of the teachers said, why are you weeping? And he said, I'm late, I missed it. And the teacher says, what I would give for one of your tears in sincerity. What I would give for one of your tears in repentance which opens the heart. And let us move to the next part of this prayerful conversation with this beloved Christ, which is to ask for what we feel that we need at the moment. Please, will you give me this thing that I need, this thing that I want, this desire that I have. Can you meet this desire? So be in touch with what is your need, your desire, your deepest want at this moment.
Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Although, of course, we don't know when or in what form. So, ask. And sometimes when we're in prayer, in this intimate space with God, with the beloved, with the Christ, just like with a, a human beloved, all we can think of to say is many. So let us invoke our beloved, this divine, this divinity. And in this intimacy of invocation, this prayer, we may hear the, the Christ invoke our name in this call and response that is prayer.
And so, lastly, or first and lastly, let us come into a, a sense of communion. Today and the beloved are one. And never have been anything else. Right here in the bridal chamber, the temple space of our heart. And nothing ever can separate us from the love of God. And as this meditation now draws to a close, I'd like to offer some words which uh, you might join me in saying in your heart. And they use the the words I am, I am that I am, that the I am, the divinity within. The words first heard by Moses, I am that I am, so God, and used by Jesus, I am. I am my I am presence. And in this presence, I am one with the I am. And the I am presence of every other human being. I am my I am presence. And in this presence, I am one with the I am. And the I am presence of every other human being. I am my I am presence. And in this presence, 
I am one with the I am and the I am presence of every other human being. Amen. <laughs>